corruption is hitting all of us. We face corruption throughout our life since we were born. We receive meager salaries and then, of course, we don't receive, the, receive it on time. And it's very, very heartrending for a teacher. There will come a time where we'll be so discouraged and it's very frustrating to continue to work for a mega sum and have somebody not working and receiving salary. There is a ghost worker almost everywhere. We call them ghost workers everywhere. Corruption has been uh, a problem in our society and uh, to a good number of people it is a way of life. Almost 50 years after independence, we're still struggling to try and find a system that works for us. This time I think we have to try a new formula. Oh Mr. Man, let us forgive and forget. But this government is determined, and the president himself is determined, to make sure that we deliver good governance to our people. Oh, my young man, pick up your books and study. Mr. Farmer, take up your cutlass and brush. People are bound to be, to be corrupt. They are bound to be dishonest in order for them to survive. People feel that um, if they should be told to stop you know, being corrupt, then the government should be able to provide the basic necessities. And the government should be able to pay them a living wage, a wage that will make them be, be, be comfortable, at least if they work you know, for their living. If you reduce the number by, by um, 20%, um, Depending on the level of staff, you have the capacity to increase salaries by maybe 15% without it affecting your budget. Sometimes there are names on the payroll, but no people to answer to those names. But one of the classic cases that we have seen is that in one department's payroll, we found the name of somebody who is supposed to be, according to the records, to be 107 years old. That is possible because we have not had a proper records management system. Uh, records are evidence of transactions and uh, the records and information held in them are a key resource. It is only by this means that you can manage any other resource, land, finance, people, Without records, really, you cannot you cannot do anything. You cannot you you don't have a past, and you cannot even learn from your past. And without records, you cannot be able to map out your future. So it is fundamental that uh, we have uh, not only records. We have uh, adequate records. The war devastated a good num a good part of the national memory of Sierra Leone, that is record. When the rebels attacked Freetown, the capital city, people who, f who know that records would be used for accounting purposes, that records would be used to investigate them, launched an attack on the treasury building. So the treasury building was burnt down because the idea is burn down the records and the evidence will be destroyed. So um, it was not only neglect that, uh, that led to the poor records management, it was also the deliberate attempt to destroy the records and then destroy the evidence.
when I came here, I see the way records are scattered in this area. You, see, you ask for some information, you could not get them because they'll tell you they'll start finding Some of them will take six weeks, you don't get the information. We've realized that in almost every single ministry, without exception, there's a lack of proper records. They don't have proper records or they don't have any records at all in some instances. And the management of those records is questionable and leaves a lot to be desired. And in terms of our investigation, the lack of records hampers our investigation and it protracts the investigations. And that's why a lot of people keep saying um, we're not moving as fast as we should in terms of prosecuting the cases. When the records are not in good order, it makes our work more tedious. It prolongs the time that we take to carry out an assignment because first of all we have to put the records in order before we can start our assignment and sometimes when they are not there at all then there's nothing to audit so what we need to do is to modernize our methods of record keeping to bring in more capacity in the records management program mr farmer take up your cutlass and brush in the Akaran General's Department, we have um, sorted out all um, and vouchers, put them all in order, so that I mean that could facilitate quick retrieval of documents. Uh, the IFMES has brought um, and great benefits. It has its own inherent controls within it. And when we brought in the payroll database into IFMES from the old FBAS um, and database, I mean we we noted at that time that I mean the there were problems with the database, so a lot of problems. We didn't have accurate data in the system, especially on personnel. I mean, you have various data fields, like date of birth, first date of employment, your PIN code. Those are data that we didn't have. We were thinking that we will resort to having information from the files to update the various data fields. Most of the files were either missing or if the files ever exist, key personnel records were not included in the files. What is written to computers are what comes out. So if you don't have an accurate record, I don't see how you expect the computers to do the magic. People are quite comfortable with the, um, with the paper-based way of um, keeping documents. But when it comes to the electronic form, people are still not comfortable with that. Even in the well-developed countries, we have what is normally called the hybrid situation. That is, computers going side by side with the paper. It's important that our governments develop capacity, not only in the management of paper-based records, but in the new formats, such as electronic records, and be in a position to manage every aspect of the life cycle of uh, the electronic record and be able to migrate when necessary from one generation to another and another. So the records verification exercise is a useful starting point in creating a synergy between the records and the computers. We are trying to put these things in order that will help the state to administer. Um, because there is going to be a problem if these records are not in proper order, especially this key document. I hope, I'll say it again and again, this verification, there is something good going to come out of it. It's not going to be like other verification. We've had so many of them. By doing these activities, going and doing the verification, we are matching the physical file um, to the payroll given to us by the Accountant General's Department. When you have this together, and then you have the individual before you, then you are certain that indeed Mr. X exists, as opposed to you just working on the payroll alone, or just working on the file alone. Employee appears before us for, for verification. He's asked a series of questions based on his employment. He's asked to identify colleagues within his responsibility center that he knows and his photograph, his or her thumbprint is obtained. The thumbprint will now be matched with both the photograph and the evidence that we have created. Yes, many cases of anomalies, different types of anomalies. Either the first appointment letter is missing, or date of birth not present, or PSC form not present, medical form absent. 
so many cases. We are not there to remove indiv individuals from the payroll, but we interview you, um, and based on the interview, we take out a, a necessary note and then submit um, um, recommendations to government. Well, it's nice that this verification has come on, because that will help solve some of these problems. One, by the ones that are on the payroll, on the staff list, that don't come to work, but their salaries are being paid. I want to see Sierra Leone better than what it is, uh, to look upon Sierra Leone for all that we have and for all that we stand for, to make it a better place for our people. We have to develop that country. Nobody will come and develop that country for us. In the, the change of attitude is not just for public servants, it's for everybody, the market women, the taxi drivers, the poda poda drivers, the teachers. I belong to a school that uh, emphasizes um, self, some level of selflessness and a commitment to other people. Um, those with whom um, I'm uh, involved in this uh, present uh, assignment all belong to that school, I believe. This young crop of Sahel Unions would use this records management profession as a lifelong path to them helping this country. Because the enthusiasm is there. Um, people have been trained. They want to work, use records as their profession to help the government. To my young man, pick up your books and study. Within my inner self, I uh, take the profession as something that is rewarding in the sense that uh, it's not only rewarding to myself but to my country. Actually, I, I, I like, you know, the job because it will help to eradicate, you know, corruption in the country. I, I, I love the, the, the job. I, I love it. I think with, with this profession, I can help my country, Sierra Leone. Like, you know, I like what the job entails. I like everything about the work, job and our passion for it. See you get some love. 